Hey guys, welcome back. Part number five, I think we're up to already on my Meng F18E Super Hornet build. This guy. So this part this week we're all about weathering. So we're gonna power line wash it and go with neat oils to kind of weather it up and beat it up a little bit more. I know it's kind of beaten up as it is, but we're gonna take it one step further with some oils, just create some total differences and kind of I actually finished it right now, so that's how it's looking. So we'll get to this stage. Um, so I guess let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, hope you had a great week. Um, we're back and ready for some weathering. So, since last week we put the decals on, I gave it a nice clear coat, a gloss clear coat all over um, to seal those decals in and also prepare for my pound line wash. So, I'm kind of excited to see this one, but actually a little apprehensive because as we know, this has quite big pound lines. So, when this wash goes on, it'll be interesting to see exactly how it looks and how overdone it is. So, this is going to really bring out all the detail and kind of show us you know, exactly um, where we're at with this. So, like I say, it's all dry, um, been drying for a few hours, um, the clear coat, and we're going to do a pound line wash. So, Regular viewers will know exactly what we're going for, and it's going to be a clay wash, flooring models, dark dirt wash. There's different colors, but dark dirt is my one I use 99% of the time. It just works really good um, with most aircraft kind of stuff. So this bottle's almost this bottle's bottle actually done. So what I do is I pour it into a little plastic cup. Um, you don't want to stick your your um, paintbrush into this because if it has a little bit of um, I don't know some kind of contaminant on there, it might ruin the whole bottle so I just do it this way um, add a little bit of water I just add you know maybe 20% water or something actually actually add a little bit more water as we get further down the bottle because obviously it gets more sludgier and thicker and stuff but yeah this bottle's last me a couple of years or so so you don't use too much so how we're going to so we'll do two stages so we'll do a pound line wash and then we'll come back and eat oil so clear coat so the reason we do a gloss clear coat is because we just want this in the power lines well, I just want this in the power lines. If you do a satin, it's going to grip a little bit more on the surface. And if you do a matte finish, it's really going to be kind of grimy and dirty, hard to get off. So I just want it just purely in the power lines, this color. So all we're going to do is we're just literally going to stick our brush into the wash and just rub it all over the aircraft, leave it 30 minutes to dry, come back with a paper towel and wipe it off. And then all the kind of areas, which are, you know, the power lines and all the little bits and bobs on the surface, it will stick, it will stick to it and remain, um, hopefully. So that's kind of it, that's the game plan. So let me go ahead and just show you kind of how easy this thing is. You just grab some, just rub it all over like that. I try and keep off metallic parts because I don't want to get too much on there. Again, just all over. And the beauty with this thing is too, if you don't like it, it just rubs off with some water. You can wash it off. It's just clay, let's say it's clay based. Do the canopy too, the frame. And these guys, absolutely everywhere. You see how easy this is. Oh, put master tape on the back. Just splodge it all over. Don't have to be precise, don't have to be accurate. Just make sure everywhere's covered. If you miss anywhere, you can always come back in later and just add some more. And I, I think I talked about early episode two. So I actually, um, on these rudders, I just glue them in place because just flap around. Um, I just want to kind of more of a stable kind of position.
And the last bit. And it's easy as that. So that's it. Um, I'd like to say, let this go 30 minutes so it's dry. We'll come back and we'll get the wash off. Okay, so it's been at least half an hour. I've kind of lost track of time, probably 45 minutes. And you can kind of see, at this point, you're probably thinking, oh my God, what's he done? He's ruined the aircraft. I did a bottom two off camera. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. So what you do is take a bit of paper towel, just a little bit of lick. And just wipe it. As easy as that. To get all the little crevices and stuff, you can use a cotton bud Q tip. And then you can see, let me, it doesn't look too bad. I'm, I mean, we're all anxious about this with these panel lines. Let's do a wing and see how that looks. And then you want to go, kind of go back in the direction of airflow. But it's a nice gloss coat, so it's not too much sticking to this. Not too bad, I think. So, keep going. If you wet it, it comes off a little bit easier. Over any decals, I just obviously just go a little slower, just in case. You never know, even though I've got that clear coat on, it can still tear it off. Get a fresh piece and it kind of gets dirty. And this is one reason too why I go with like light paint because once you've got the wash and weathering on it, it darkens it all up. So I kind of go a little bit lighter to compensate for that is my post shading and stuff there you go looking good right eh, I mean the power lines are okay now it's I mean now it's all on I'm not I mean I don't look at it and think well those power lines are huge I mean it's all kind of blending in right so cool so let me go work around the rest of this aircraft off camera and we'll come back when I'm done Okay, so the wash is all off now. All the little parts are done as well. Um, looking really good. Um, power lines, eh, maybe a little bit overdone, but I think it's all going to blend in well with the oils and stuff. So it's looking a little toy-like right now because obviously it's um, it's in the um, kind of gloss, glossy and toy-like. But give you a quick look. Mm, looking really good. So yeah, so it's looking all toy like, it's all glossy and stuff. So what we're going to do is um, we're now going to give it a matte, a flat coat um, of XF86, good old Tamiya XF86 flat coat all the way across. Then it's going to look really nice. Once it's flatted, it's going to look more realistic. Um, and then that's what we need for the next stage, which is use oils. If we try to use oils right now um, on this gloss surface, it's going to not stick. It's going to wipe right off because it's so glossy. So we need some texture on there. So we've got flat coat so the, gloss, so the um, oils can stick. And um, yeah, so let me go ahead and get start. I'll get one one quick look over, make sure there's no more wash. I don't think there is. I think we got it all off. And um, we'll go ahead and spray the flat coat. Okay, so it's been um, 24 hours. I've pretty much been busy doing other things and came back. So I've clear coated, um, flat finished XF86, the whole aircraft. See, it's looking really nice right now. I mean, you can really stop now, but I'm gonna go ahead and just obviously add that final few um, touches with the oil. So all parts are there, all, I said it all of me. 
um, done the same way, clear coated with with um, a matte finish because when it comes to oils, I've learned the hard way, if you have a gloss or a satin finish, they just wipe right off um, and we work's kind of wasted. It's, they don't grip at all. So we're going to use a few colors, but, for, um, but mainly Starship Filth, I think, for this one. I normally use Smoke, but this is a light gray, so I'm going to try Starship Filth and see how it goes. Um, this is ABT 510 Aptilon, which is an AK, 502 Aptilon, um, which is AK Interactive. Um, oil paint, and these are oh, God, dropped it. Um, these are really good quality. Uh, other things I sell some brushes I use, especially for neat oils. Um, talk about this every time. I have a soft brush from blending. This one's a little bit stiffer, and um, this guy here is just kind of used to apply it. Um, what else have we got going on? Um, need some enamel thinners. I'm using the odorless thinners by Aptilon, but actually the uh, straightforward um, X20 from Tamiya, the um, the blue top enamel thinners are really good too. So you want some kind of enamel thinners. Um, also these are oil paints, so oil being enamel. And as I always say, a little bit of this goes a long, long way. So literally, I'm gonna pour some of the cup here. Um, a little drop of this and it's gonna go, it's gonna pretty much wipe the whole model clean of um, oil paint. So, right, cool. So what I'm gonna do is, gone for as many minutes and times before, just need a tiny little bit of oil. I'm just gonna use a paper towel. We could use a bit of cardboard. And just that's all you need, just a little dot. So this thing might be six bucks, maybe, but it will last years. That's all I need. I'm not going to go crazy on this one. Um, cover the whole thing in oil. Just basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out the panel lines and kind of deepen them with the oil and blend it in. So taking my brush, I'm just going to get a little bit of oil, wipe it all off. And take the aircraft, and I'm just going to follow panel lines. So let's do this one right here. So I'll make sure I'm in shot. There's barely any oil on this brush. So I need a little bit more. Then I'm just basically like drawing around the line. And taking my other brush, you can see where I kind of applied that. Just gonna blend it in. And that is it. Subtle, but you can kind of see how it, I did there. So I'm gonna go and continue doing more. Um, I do want more, can you guys see it? Let's do these guys back here. And you can see I'm barely putting any oil on, just a very tiny little bit. Less is more in this kind of deal. Just blend it in. If you put too much on, just come back with a cotton, cotton bud or a Q-tip dipped in enamel thinners, it'll wipe right off. So, I find, it feels like I kind of struggle kind of working around a tripod and always lights and stuff. So let me kind of sit down, con concentrate, and get rest done, and we'll come back when I'm done. But I'm, same process, just let you trace around certain lines, not do every line, just pick out certain areas of the aircraft, and do that. And it adds that kind of um, grimy and kind of beaten up effect to help with weathering. I really like oils. I like the way they finish. And one thing too is I never ever clear coat oil. So obviously did a matte finish before I did this. Once I do oils, that's it. There's no other clear coats going on in this aircraft. With the natural oil is going to be the last. Um, Top, top, last kind of level or layer of um, paint or weathering or whatever we do on this aircraft. Cool, so let me kind of um, get going on this and we'll come right back. Right, we're done. Finished weathering. I can go on all day, but I think I've beaten this up as much as I can. So, went ahead, you see, hopefully, you see the panel lines. Pick them out. Put back here. And went for all these other parts, like the wings and flaps. There's so many extra parts here. I mean, it makes it a little bit tedious. Um, 
you have to do it separately with a snap off but I mean with other aircraft normally the flaps are attached and the um, the wings are, are generally one wing I don't normally do wing folds so it makes things a little bit easier but when you got obviously all these extra parts just a little bit extra work to do um, so I went through did all this, this the um, Starship filth and then I you have to be very careful with this stuff this is um, faded dark yellow which is more of an orange color but I use this as um, hydraulic stains so you don't go too crazy here just you know a few dots here and there and then you can see I just blended it in coming from certain you know panels and stuff and then a little bit more on the bottom for hydraulic stains did a couple on the, um, on the stabilizers too then finally what I did was I just took the neutral gray and again with my brush neatly just put a couple of dots and a couple of panels just like tiny couple of dots and with my big kind of um, soft brush just blended it in so this panel right here a couple of others just blended in just and then I think the center of the um, or center of the stabilizers and then on the I'm not sure you can see it but on the rudders too just a little couple of little dots and then just blend it in and you see it just gives that little bit of tonal difference Whew. so that's about 45 minutes work and we're done I mean she's looking beaten up but <laughs> that's what I was going for I told you guys at the very beginning it's going to be weathered up and um, yeah, we really kind of went to town on this one, so we had a lot of fun. I think I might try a helicopter next, because I think I can get away with doing a lot of weathering on a helicopter without kind of really kind of jump yarding it up too much. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, that's pretty much it. So a lot of this stuff can get, just gets pushed on. Like the um, now we're done with this stuff. Like the tails, for example, the fit's so good you don't even need any glue. And just it just slap, snaps right in. Um, so all the stuff now next week we can start adding all the bits and bobs and um, putting it back to, putting it together. Um, things like the flaps obviously just get glued on to those tiny two little bits holding it on there's no way when you kind of brush it down and stuff pretty vigorously this thing's just gonna snap off that's why we do it separately so do all the stuff separately makes it easy to weather and then we'll just glue it all in together and it's gonna come together really nicely I think so all the different weather effects we've done I think I'm kind of ha really happy how it's turning out I know it's not to everybody's taste but again I think I'm you know I've seen I've seen stuff like this in real life on pictures and stuff and I yeah and again this is my artistic kind of license I guess going at it and just the way I like to do things I don't like plain gray I do like to kind of break it up a little bit like you see there and that kind of stuff maybe they're better than light see so, yeah. them cool right so I'm gonna wrap this video up I think tons of weathering we're done um, again no more clear coats let the oil sit um, ideally five days um, my oil is pretty dry for whatever reason so probably 24 48 hours I'll just leave it to sit and then you can touch it so you get like fingerprints and all over your hands and stuff um, but yeah it usually dries pretty quick for me um, but that is it so have a great week I'll see you next week where we continue building this guy and we um, yeah almost finished and it's what a fun build it is too so have a good one see ya bye